Hi and welcome in this video. In today's episode, I want to talk about the best camera a photography beginner can buy. I would recommend. Oh, such a long sentence, but so much in that video. So first thing first, this is no sponsored video, this is no video I got money from Sony, this is a video i doing for my free will because I'm very convinced of this camera. Uh, I'm testing that for a little, quite a long time now. I had it with me uh, on the Azores Island in Norway and I will have it with me in Scotland next week. And I love this camera for a few reasons and I want to tell you the love reasons first and then the contrasts um, as last that you just have an overview um, about the camera and why I would recommend the camera. So first thing first, it's pretty small. So you can just put it literally in your pocket. I put the camera in my jacket um, all of the time. It's so small, even with the lens, you can just put it in the pocket. It's very lightweight, it's not heavy, and that is the normal um, kit you get when you buy it. So it's the camera and the 16 to 50 millimeter um, kit lens which is pretty small and pretty lightweight as well. When you compare it to my a7R2 with a battery grip and with a big lens, the landscape lens on it, it's so heavy and it's so much bigger. Look at that. Look at that. Look at... It's just that weights something like one or two kilo and that is maybe 200 gram or something. You can just put it in the pocket and you can hang it on your belt and like the people, you know the people uh, with cell phones who have the cell phone on the belt? You can just walk like that, you can be like them. Or you can be different, do whatever you like. So, and if you compare it to just the bigger camera without um, battery grip or something, it's still a lot smaller and a lot more lightweight. So that's first point. Second point is, it's so easy to photograph with those cameras. I learned myself on the um, 600D from Canon and I did a lot of videos on my German YouTube channel um, with the 600D. It was a great camera, but it was a few years ago. The technique uh, which is now in the camera is pretty old and pretty, yeah, old fashioned. You have so much new, new and great features inside the Sony cameras and inside mirrorless cameras all in all. There are great other mirrorless cameras as well, but I would go away from from DSLR. So that's one thing I say. Um, DSLR is not the future, um, mirrorless cameras are the future. <sighs> Silence for a moment. Everybody in the hate section <laughs> below. No, that's what I just say. It's just my opinion. So all the advantages you have from um, the mirrorless system, which I will say later as well, um, you have in that small camera as well. So you have a digital viewfinder, you can just look through and you actually see what you get. So when I just hit the, for example, um, the aperture, then I see the picture gets darker and brighter. And I, I cannot just see it in the live view, like DSLR users from Canon, for example, and know it as well um, in the, in the, on the back screen. You can see it in the viewfinder, so you don't have to put the camera down. You can just scroll or you can adjust the shutter speed. You can see everything in the viewfinder. And when I do a picture, chuck, like that, I can see it in the viewfinder as well. And how great is that? And that is all with autofocus. The great advantage from mirrorless cameras, uh, cameras, what I always say is, when you focus manually, you have the focus peaking, and the focus peaking is so great, I just use it. I don't use the autofocus anymore because you can focus so easy manually with focus peaking. So you have a lot of technical things which make the photographing more easy. And easy is always good. A lot of people say, mm, Photography is an art and it has to be difficult. That's what German people always say, it has to be difficult. <laughs> no, but it don't have to. If it's easy, then it's easy. Why not? Why don't make it easier? So that is a pretty good thing. And an awesome thing, what I would say a lot of people don't know what is inside that camera and why it's the perfect beginner camera is, just go to the menu and then go to, I don't know what it's called in English, maybe I, I switched the camera in English now, it's easier. So now everything is in English and when you go in the menu, in the first thing where the camera is, on point seven to shooting tip list, and I imagine you never checked that before, I did it when I was sitting on the toilet, uh, actually it was, 
I go, and there you see all those nice things. You see basic techniques for shooting, portraits, landscape, night scenes, blah, blah, blah. Okay, I go into landscapes because I like landscape photography. Ooh, sky, direction of the light, let's check that. If you point the camera to the blue sky when the sun is in front of you, the sky may turn out paler or paler than it actually is. If you want a deeper blue, point the camera with the sun behind you. Boom, great tip for a beginner, perfect. So as a beginner, you don't need a book, you don't need to buy my books anymore, damn, now I don't have a job anymore. No, you can just look in the camera and check all the nice tips which are actually on the camera. Boom, how nice is that? So if you have the camera already, check that section, it's great, you can get great tips out of it. If you don't have the camera, buy the camera, it's nice. The next point I have on the list is all the brand new features. I said already, oh, you have the nice uh, viewfinder, which is digital. You have the um, focus peaking. You have a super fast autofocus, which is the main thing they are promoting in the advertisement. But it's one thing I don't actually use. It's, it's good to have, but it's one thing I don't use. But you have 60 frames when you're filming full HD. And that's a point I use actually, because I like filming, I like slow motions. If it's just 80% slower or something, or even you can do 50% slower with 60 frames per second. And that's pretty nice in full HD inside the camera. And another advantage, you can focus. Because you don't have a mirror anymore, you can just focus like you do when you're just taking photos while filming. And that is awesome. Continuous focus and stuff like that. It's cool. And those are all features inside the camera. Because it's that, that small, you think, mm, there can't be much in the camera, but there's actually a flash inside. Look at that. Poof, how nice is that little flash? It has everything. And that was one thing I was very, very convinced when I first tech, uh, tested the camera. Another great thing, you have the screen. So it's actually a camera I would build myself like that. Because you have, the, you have a viewfinder actually, you know those small cameras without a viewfinder, it has a viewfinder and you have a flip screen. Boom. So you can go with a low angle or when you're filming like that, you can use the flip screen pretty cool. One thing I was switching to Sony from Canon was the sensor. I love the full frame sensor of the 7R, that was the first Sony camera I used. Um, I was switching from the 60 and 5D Mark III to the 7R for landscape shots and I loved the dynamic range. And the dynamic range in that sensor is great as well. It is an APS-C sensor, so no full frame, but it's a great sensor. 24 megapixels, you have all the details, it has a nice quality and you always think, oh, the camera is so small, it can't have a great quality but it has. One thing I would recommend you, the normal kit lens is great. 16 to 50 millimeter, it's quite more wide angleish than normal kit lenses. But what I like for landscape photography is the 12 millimeter Samyang 2.0. It has an open aperture, so 2.0, which is great for star photography. Um, and for portrait as well, I did a lot of portrait shots, you get a nice bokeh out of that. But as well, you have a screw filter thing on front, and you have 12 millimeters, which is great for landscape shots. And that thing costs 350 euro. That camera with the kit lens costs 600 euro. So when you buy all together, you don't have 1000 euro. It's less than 1000 euro and that is awesome. When you just think about that camera, 600 euro, it fits inside that camera seven times with a lens on it, seven times. You can buy seven cameras for the price of that camera. So as a beginner, it is great, it's just, there's nothing better for that price on the market, I would say. But as well, everything that's shining has its shadow behind and there are a few things that I don't like on that camera. Um, that's just my opinion, maybe you see it different, maybe you see, oh, that's uh, that are the great points from the camera. But what I don't like about the camera is that it has that wheel here and I don't like it with the big cameras here with the um, exposure correction and stuff. I don't need those buttons. You, don't never, you never need an exposure correction on a pro camera, that's what I say. And it's too close to the aperture. So usually when I'm turning the button, I turn that button and then I'm switching the mode uh, and I wanted to change the aperture because they are so close and it has a nicer, um, a nicer feeling because it has those little um, rills and those little yeah, uh, bubbles <laughs> on top. So it feels it's better and, and, and it feels like, oh, you have to turn that wheel and not the other wheel. So I don't know why they did it and um, it's a thing I did a lot when I first started to, to take photos with that cam. Another thing is because I do videos, I want to have an audio in. It doesn't have an audio in. 
So when you're filming with external microphones or something, you can't put it directly in the camera, you need an extra recorder. A lot of people do it extra, but I, for myself, I always say, if you can save time, save time. An external recorder always needs more time to set up and as well to synchronize um, behind uh, when, you, when you do it afterwards in editing. So those are two points I don't like. Another point I don't like with the lens is that it don't have a scale on it. I love lenses with the scale. I have it on my landscape lens. You have it on the Zamyang lens, so you know exactly where you focused. I would say they did it because they want to keep it easy as well, but I don't like that you zoom here. It's like a camcorder. You zoom inside there, and then you focus there, and you don't have, so it doesn't finish, so you don't have an end. Usually when I focus, I want to have an end and a beginning, so I know exactly where to focus. So when you're filming, it's difficult, but then just change the lens, it's easier. There you have, there you have your end, you have your beginning, and then you can focus very easy. That's what I say, that's just my opinion. But all in all, 600 euro with a lens, very small, all technical features you need in 2016, it's a great camera. And you have SD cards, and that's one feature I like because it's so small, you have the SD card right next to the battery. That's cool. Battery life, that's always a thing um, with the Sony cameras. It's all digital, you don't have a mirror, so you need more battery. But an iPhone needs a lot of battery as well, so never mind, you get used to it. I, for myself, I need three batteries, uh, two batteries a day with that camera, and three batteries a day with that camera when I'm not filming. When I'm filming with a high ISO as well, then I need a lot of battery power, maybe five batteries a day or something, but it always depends. Two batteries a day, you're fine with that camera. So that was just my opinion on the A6000. Um, everybody who asks me what camera should I buy if you are on a budget, till 600 euro for example, go and get the A6000. You won't be disappointed. It's great for everything, for filming, for taking photos, fast autofocus, for landscape. You can use it for everything. There's no thing where it's not good into. Um, there's a new camera coming, the A6300. Maybe when the video uh, is out, the camera is already out, but it's much more expensive. Um, uh, you don't actually need it as a beginner. It's just an upgrade for people who need something more, some more specifications. But if you're a beginner, um, that camera is great, and if the new camera is out, the price for that drops as well. I think in the end of the year, maybe it's 500 euro or something, it's great. You can do nothing wrong with that camera. Um, and another thing I forgot, oh, there's so many things I want to say about the camera. Um, uh, I use the time-lapse app on that camera as well. You can use it on the big cameras, but you can use it on the small cameras. So when I'm out in the field, I'm photographing with the big camera, I just put the small A6000 on a tripod, hit the time-lapse app, hit a record, and boom, 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 it does the time-lapse, I do my shots, I'm, I do how much time I take, I go back to the camera, I just hit stop, Boom, done. Time lapse done, photos done, everything's done. So that was just a quick overview. Well, quick, quick, <laughs> not that quick. But uh, if you have something else to say about the A6000, maybe your experiences with that, post it in the comment section below. Looking forward for your comments. And if you liked the video, share it with somebody who might be interested in it as well. The link to the A6000 um, is in the description as well. It's on my website, learnfromben.com. Check it out and we see us next week, next Friday. There's a new video about photography each Friday. New videos coming out about editing, filmmaking, photography, if you have other things, just post in the comment section below. I, I look that I can make other videos as well. If you can speak German, check out my German channel. There are over 400 videos about photography already. It's pretty awesome. So, see you next time and never forget, sag mal Einstellung, Digga. Und hau da rein. There's a nice shortcut which gives you a before and after. So, if I hit the Y button, you see before and after. And you see how much it is.